we can trust God in any circumstance we encounter with the assurance found in these three words, God's got this. We can, we can overcome we can have victory. We can believe in deliverance. We can believe in healing. We can believe that we can overcome in any situation as long as we know God's got this. Is there anything that I ever go through that God don't know about? The answer is a resounding no. Is there any situation I ever find myself in that God's not aware of? The answer is a resounding no. Is there any sickness that God can't heal me of? The answer is a resounding no. Is there any situation that my marriage or my family or my finances can find ourselves in that God can't fix? And the answer is a resounding no. Is anything too hard for God? No. As believers, as children of God, we know it's going to be okay as long as we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus Christ. Now, if you're looking to the world right now for help, you're depressed. And there is nothing too hard for thee. And there is nothing that's too hard for thee. Is there anything too hard for me? What's the answer to that question that God's asking us? No, nothing too hard for him. Say it again, God's got this. We all have things that come against us. It's easy to live uptight, wondering how it's going to work out. What if the medical report isn't good? What if my finances don't get better? What if my child doesn't get accepted in that school? We tried to figure it out. We've done our best, but we don't see anything changing. If we're not careful, we'll live worried, discouraged, not expecting it to get better. But there's a simple phrase you have to keep down in your spirit. God's got this. He's on the throne. He sees what's happening. He already has the solution. You don't have to figure it out. There may not be a logical answer. In the natural, you don't see a way. That's okay. We serve a supernatural God. He has ways to do it we've never thought of. And instead of trying to force it to happen, living uptight, you have to let go and let God. When you turn it over to Him and say, God, I know you've got this. I know you're in control. Not only will you feel the heaviness, the weight lift off of you, but God will make things happen that you couldn't make happen. You have many problems. You have many challenges. You have many questions. You have many struggles. You need to know that you have a mighty God because when you face mighty problems, you need to know that God who will help you face them is up to the task. And he is up to the task right now, my friend. For God so loved the world. He has never messed up. He has never struggled. And he is not messing up now. And he is not struggling now. He will help us. He will help us. Really, what we need to do during these seasons is focus less on the muscle of mankind and more on the muscle of God. Reach up and you'll see that our God has got this. In Psalm chapter 46 in verse number 1 that Psalmist David wrote, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. I've told you this before, but it bears repeating. The only time and place in your entire Bible that God promises to be a present help is when we're in trouble. He said, I'm going to be a very present help. I'm not going to be a casually present help. I'm not going to be a spotty present help. I'm not going to be here and there, here a little, there a little present help. He said, I'm going to be a very present help in the time of trouble. God is not just with you on the mountaintops. 
He's with you in the valleys when you're going through things. He knows what you're up against. The scripture says God is concerned about what concerns you. A sparrow doesn't fall to the ground without God knowing about it. How much more is God concerned about what's happening in your life? Trust him. Live from a place of peace. This is a decision we have to make on a daily basis. Because every day, there's something to worry about. There's some reason to get upset. All through the day, keep this phrase close to your heart. God's got this. He's concerned about me. He's working in my life. He's bigger than my enemies. He's lining up the right people. He's arranging things in my favor. That attitude of faith is what allows God to do amazing things. Do you know why and how the shepherd boy David was able to prevail over the warrior giant Goliath? Very simple. David didn't compare himself to the giant. He compared the giant to God. We need to quit comparing ourselves to our troubles. Quit comparing ourselves to our pain and our pressure and the things we think we can't do anything about. They're giants in our lives. And instead of trying to figure out what can I do about it? Do I have enough money? Do I have enough clout? Do I have enough friends? Is there any way I can solve this? And when you look at it through that eye, you're comparing David to Goliath. But David was smart enough to say, you come to me with sword and spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. And the Bible said David ran right toward him and let the rock go and the giant come down. He compared the giant to his God. What you're facing may be bigger, stronger, more powerful, but when you refuse to worry, when you refuse to live stressed out, instead you stay in peace, thanking God that he's fighting your battles, knowing that he's in control, You are showing God by your actions that you're trusting Him. We worry too much. We worry about all sorts of things, don't we? We worry about things we can't even change. We worry until we're a nervous wreck. We worry ourselves into high blood pressure. We worry ourselves into a stroke or a heart attack. We worry ourselves into ulcers. We worry until we become absolutely miserable people. The kind of people nobody wants to be around. We worry when it would be easier to trust God. Is something weighing you down today? Are you worried about a situation? Frustrated by what didn't work out? Or maybe down on yourself? because you're not where you thought you would be. God is saying to you, I've got this. It's not a surprise to me. I have new beginnings. I have healing. I have breakthroughs. I'm asking you to change your perspective. Switch over into faith. That situation at work that you're worried about, God's got it. I'm asking you to quit worrying about what you're facing. Quit losing sleep over that child that's not doing right. Quit being upset because somebody did you wrong. Your dream hasn't come to pass yet. Can I tell you, God's got this. I like what Corey Ten Boom, the famous Jewish Holocaust survivor said. She said, worry does not empty tomorrow of its troubles. It empties today of its strength. Your worry don't change tomorrow. Your worry doesn't change next week. Your worry isn't going to change your situation. Your worry isn't going to help you make more money on the job. It's not going to fix your car. It's not going to fix the house. It's not going to keep it from raining tomorrow. All the time you're worrying about whether or not it'll rain tomorrow, you're missing today's sun. Life is too short for you to live your life every day worrying about something that might happen. Worrying about what somebody has said or what somebody has done. Life is too short to spend it worrying. 
Life is too short for you to allow yourself to constantly all, be all worked up about something. Life is too short to go around miserable. Life is too short for you to make everybody around you miserable. Life is too short to harbor grudges. Life is too short to hate. Quit worrying about stuff that hadn't happened yet. It's a proven fact that 99% of the things we worry about never happen. Quit worrying about what can go wrong and get excited about what can go right. It doesn't take any more effort to believe something bad's going to happen than it does to believe something good is going to happen. No more effort. And by the way, they're really both faith. You can either have faith that something good's going to happen or you can have faith something bad's going to happen. Either one is you got faith. I choose to have faith God's going to do something good. I said I choose to have faith God's going to do something good. Quit worrying about the future. As children of God, we don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. Quit worrying about the future. Put it in the hands of God. That's where it belongs anyway. Sometimes we're trying to play God. We're trying to make our boss promote us, make ourselves get well, and make the contract go through. But when you take your hands off and say, God, I know you've got this. I'm not going to worry about my finances. I'm not going to live uptight because of the medical report. I'm not going to be frustrated because I haven't met the right person. God, I trust your timing and I trust your ways. My life is in your hands. God never promised that we wouldn't have difficulties, but he did promise he would give us strength for every battle. He would take what was meant for harm and use to our advantage. You may have a good reason to worry about something in your health, your finances, a dream. You've done everything you can. Doesn't look like it's going to work out. Stay in faith. God is saying, I've got this. I'm working behind the scenes. I'm in the process of turning it around. It's just a matter of time before you see things change in your favor. Now live out of a place of peace, a place of trust. It may not happen the way you thought, but God's ways are better than our ways. God knows what's best for you. He's got this. And if you're in the middle of a storm right now, instead of going home tonight and worry yourself sleepless, go to work tomorrow feeling bad because you worried all night and didn't sleep. You know what you realize in the morning after you've worried all night? is that the problem's still there. Worrying didn't fix it. So I'm worried about my child. I'm worried about our money. I'm worried about jobs. I'm worried about a car. I'm worried about a place to live. I'm worried about my spouse. I'm worried. You can worry, 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 and you're not going to change no kids, no spouse, no family, no bank balance, because worry isn't how you fix the stuff. The way you get a miracle is lay the worry aside and have faith in God. Don't worry. God's got it all in control. God makes a way where there seems to be no way. When you're stuck, when you're confused, when your back's against the wall, when you're marriage is struggling, when your finances aren't doing well, when your children aren't doing well, when you have a health issue, God makes a way where there seems to be no way. Where there's no way to turn, there's nothing to do, there's, everything is lost, God makes a way where there seems to be no way. Father God is the way maker. Isaiah 43 verse 16, the New Living Translation reads, I am the Lord who opened a way through the waters, making a dry path through the sea, the Red Sea for his people. 
One more, Isaiah 43, verse one, Message Bible. When you're in over your head, I'll be there with you. When you're in rough waters, you will not go down. When you're between a rock and a hard place, it won't be a dead end. Seems to me that there are a lot of people finding themselves between a rock and a hard place. Now these powerful verses state very clearly that God can make a way, that he is the way maker. He is the path opener. He is the trail blazer. He is the road builder. He makes a way when there is no way. So there is no way there is no way, but, but he makes one. Or there seems to be no way, and he reveals one that we couldn't see or haven't seen. He makes a way when it is impossible to us. Have you ever been between a rock and a hard place? Ever feel like you can't make it? Ever, ever feel like you, you can't, it's impassable, you, you can't make it. Yeah, I've been there a few times. Ever feel like you're in over your head? I mean, the situation's just too deep. You're, you're treading water. Throughout scripture, one principle is always constant. God can make a way when there seems to be no way. There are times when life hands us situations and many are in them now with the atmosphere in our world. Situations in which our faith must rise and push us to keep right on going. Trusting that God will make a way for us to pass through the difficult times, to pass through the, the trying time, pass through the unknown places to pass through the unknown destinations, times you can't when you can't see. Like Abel, sacrificial times. Like Noah, like Noah's stormy times. Like Abraham, times when there's destinations before you that you can't, you can't know, you can't see. Like Sarah, barren times. Like Elijah, lonely times. Like Job, painful times. Homesick times, testing times. Deathbed times. Just plain old times when it takes faith to handle what we don't know or see or feel or hear or understand. Times when we have to put our faith in the way maker. If you will trust him, you can find him to be the way maker, just like everyone that I just mentioned in the scripture. It's been my experience that God doesn't mind getting between a rock and a hard place and creating ways for his people. Listen to me today when I tell you that God can make a way where there is no way. When, when, hold on. When you are in one of those places where you say there's no way out of this. There's no way through this. There's nobody that can help me with this. This is the one that's going to destroy me. This is the situation that is the end of me. That's when God steps up and says, you can put your trust in me because I can do anything. The things that we think are blocking us, God is going to use to bring us victory. When we feel lost and we can't find our way, we're going to find out that God will always make a way. Unseen hands are working. You may not see it, but unseen hands are working. 
Unseen plans are, are forming and unfolding. You may not see it, but that doesn't mean that it isn't happening. He's working behind the scenes to turn things for your good, to turn things around for your families, to turn things around for prodigals, to turn things around. He's, he's working behind the scenes on ways to bless you. He's working behind the scenes on ways to, to provide for you, to open paths of connection for you. He's leading others into your life that you don't even know about, couldn't possibly know about. He's leading others into your life that will become the answers to your heart cry, answers to your prayers. He's blazing a path beyond the dead ends. He doesn't stop when it looks like it's over. Never has. He makes a way. That's why Hebrews 11 teaches so emphatically, keep going, keep trusting, keep believing, don't quit. What for you is a dead end, to him is an entryway to a place you haven't seen yet. To a place of awesome victory. His love will, will make a way for you to get there. He's the way maker. He has a plan that we haven't seen yet. Oh, I'm confident of that. There's no dead end to him. And I came today to tell you, he's the way maker. You may not see it, but he's the way maker. You may have came in today or you may be watching today and you say, I cannot see this. It's okay. He's behind the scene. He's working. And he's the way maker. He's going to anoint you to see beyond the dead end. And he's going to anoint you to move into an area you didn't even know anything about. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. And I want to add this to it. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Just don't forget him when you get there. When things feel hopeless, they feel helpless, you just need to know that God promises to make a way. Um, when you feel like every door has been shut, or you can't see how something is going to happen in front of you, he will make a way. Because our God is a way maker. And he will make a way through providing a miracle He'll make a way through keeping a promise or he'll just shine light into the darkness of your situation. God makes a way in the middle of no way. Israel found themselves at the Red Sea and God separates the waters and in the midst of impossibility, Israel walks through on dry ground, sea separated on each side and they walk through. That's a God that makes a way in the middle of no way. You know, when we talk about God being a miracle worker, there are a lot of skeptics in the world today, even within the Christian community, that, that would say that the miracles of the Bible just either never actually took place or they're not for today. But the question for all of us is, is really, is he still working miracles? That's the question. Is he still the miracle worker today? Is God still in the miracle business. Can, can blind eyes that have never seen miraculously still be open? Can God still take just a small amount of food and, and still multiply that food to, to feed thousands? Can people still be miraculously healed when everything else says that there's just no way? Does God still intervene into human affairs in an extraordinary way? And based on what I read in scripture and what I've seen with my own two eyes and what I've experienced, God, I want to tell you that God is still in the business of doing miracles. I want you to know that today. I believe that with all of my heart. He is still a miracle worker. Over the past few years, I've watched God heal relationships that seem beyond repair. I've watched him heal people of cancer when doctors said it couldn't be done. I've watched him provide financially for people when all hope seemed to be lost. I watched God provide for my family when we said, there's just no way that this can happen. I've watched him heal both of my boys from back injuries. When the doctors looked at both of them and said, 
It's never gonna happen. And I've watched God do it. God is still in the business of doing miracles. I want you to know that. I want you to believe it because I believe it with everything inside of me. Most of us, I would say, we have no problem believing that God does miracles today. But we're not quite sure he'll do them for us. In order to experience a miracle, sometimes you have to take a step of faith. Miracles are God's business. Obedience is mine. Miracles are God's business. Obedience is yours. I'm still the miracle worker, but you've got to take a step of faith. I like what Mark Batterson says. He says, you can't expect God to do the supernatural if you aren't willing to do the natural. And here's the point. If you want to see the miraculous, sometimes you have to take a step of obedience. You have to trust God. You have to have faith. And you have to ask, you have to do what he's asking you to do, even if you don't want to. Even if everything inside of you is screaming, no, that doesn't make sense. Some of you are believing God for a desired outcome. But quite honestly, what you are asking God to do for you requires a miracle to get it done. You need a miracle. And Jesus is the miracle worker. He is the miracle worker. Nothing is impossible for Jesus to do for you. Luke chapter 1 verse 37 says, For nothing will be impossible with God. Matthew chapter 19 verse 26 says, But Jesus looked at them and said, With, with, with man this is impossible. Let's say it together. But with God all things are possible. I love Ephesians 3.20. Paul writes, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is, in work with, that is at work with inside of us. What does that mean? It just means simply God is able. God is able. Eugene Peterson says, Most miracles are the byproduct of a long obedience in the same direction. For some of you, God's just saying to you, Get up. Get up, trust me, move forward, take a step of obedience. Here's another thing. If Jesus does a miracle in your life, there's always a bigger purpose involved. What's the purpose? It will always, always, always be about bringing God glory and drawing you closer to him. To deepen your faith, to put Jesus on display. Listen, every one of the miracles in the book of John, every one of the miracles in the Bible is about bringing glory to God and deepening the faith of the people involved in the miracle. But here's what you need to know. God will never waste your pain. He will never waste your hurt. He will never waste your suffering and he will never waste a miracle. And here's the other thing. Regardless of how long you've been waiting on a miracle, Jesus has not forgotten about you. There are no promises in God's word that says that God's gonna heal every person that is suffering or every person that's paralyzed or every person that, that's in pain while we're here on this earth. Could he heal everyone in the world right now that's suffering? Absolutely. But for whatever reason, he chooses not to. Even though Romans 8, 23 says we groan to be released from pain and suffering in this lifetime, it won't be until we get to heaven that we'll be healed and be given new bodies. And that, listen, that's a tough reality to accept about God's sovereignty. It's especially tough if, if maybe you're a child or you have a child that is suffering or it's someone that you love deeply and you just watch them suffer all day long. However, even though I don't understand why God may choose to do a miracle here, but he chooses not to do a miracle over here, I do know this. He is compassionate. He is loving he is good and he's not forgotten about anyone. He is with you just as much as he's with the person that he does the miracle for. Just as much. And listen, some of you are waiting on God to do a miracle in your life. Listen, our Savior is still a miracle worker. He is still a promise keeper. He's not forgotten about you. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 says, have you heard? Have you never heard? Have, have you never understood the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth? He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths 
will become weak and tired and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord, who put their faith in the miracle worker will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. That means that regardless of what you have been through today, Jesus is still a miracle worker. And the question for you today is, do you need a miracle? God's timing is rarely our timing, which is why one of the most frequent cries in the Psalms is, how long? How long? Why not now, God? What possible reason could you have for making this protracted suffering even longer? Faith is at least in part the ability to trust that if you knew everything God knew, and if you understood everything God understood, and if you could see everything God sees, you would say, that's right. It takes faith to believe that because our vision is so limited and our pain can seem so long. But if we knew what God knew and could see what God sees, we would say, of course. Of course I see why that had to happen to, to him and to them and to her and to that country and that people and that decision and that thing. God knew what he was doing. I love what the commentator Victor Hamilton says, God's delays are not necessarily God's denials. And as some of you endure what seems like a long period of God's delay, 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 know that it is not necessarily His denial. When thoughts tell you it's too late, it's never going to happen now, let that go in one ear and out the other. God is faithful. What He promised you is still in route. You may not see any sign of it. Every circumstance says there's no way. Things are happening that you can't see. In the unseen realm, God is moving the wrong people out of the way, lining up the healing, the favor, the good breaks. They're already on your schedule. But here's the key. If you could see how it was going to happen, that wouldn't take any faith. God can use anything and anybody to get you where he wants to take you. And so I just came to tell somebody who came in here feeling for your, sorry for yourself and came in here just feeling, woe is me, never, nothing good ever happens to me. I'm never, I'm always the last one hired and the first one fired. I'm always, and you, and you got your little sad song that you've loved uh, uh, to sing. I came to tell you, pick up the needle, put on a new song. I am who God said I am. Time for you to quit disqualifying yourself. Some of us disqualify ourselves before we ever show up. I serve a God who can give me a job I'm not technically qualified for. But because I'm in his bloodline, if he wills me to work there, he's going to put me there no matter how he gets me there. But sometimes your plan and God's plan are two different things. Oh, I came to tell you, you got, don't worry about your plan. When yours falls apart, that just means it wasn't God's. That's all it means. Somebody needs to take that with you. When it doesn't work out the way you thought it would work out, that just means that wasn't God's way. That's all it means. Don't get desperate. Don't get frustrated. Don't, certainly don't get mad at God. He didn't give you the plan. You had the plan. Sometimes we give God our deadlines and get mad when he doesn't meet them. Oh, but God does things in his own way. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And so you got to learn to walk by faith. And promises that you've given up on, dreams you've let go of, you've accepted it's too late to accomplish that goal, too late to break the addiction, too late to have a baby. That may be true looking at a normal schedule. You don't see it on there, but God is saying it's still on my schedule. I still have a way to bring it to pass. I wouldn't have promised it if I wasn't going to do it. Now, all through the day, Father, thank you that what you started in my life, you're going to finish. It may seem too late for me, but I know it's not too late for you. Thank you for these unscheduled blessings, blessings out of season. 
I came to tell you your timeline is in the hand of your God. He knows what he started in your life. He knows where he's taking you and you got to walk by faith and not by sight and stop getting mad at all the people around you. It's not their job to elevate your life. God is the one who will exalt you in good time. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. In due season, when the time is right, he will exalt you. Don't ever mistake your feeling of urgency. Don't ever mistake your feeling of urgency for purpose from God. Your urgency, your sense of having to do something should can deceive you into thinking that's your purpose from God. I've got to do this right now. But here's the thing. You feel urgency and I feel urgency, but God does not. It doesn't mean that your urgency is felt by God. God may put something urgent in your life, but here's the reality. Your urgency doesn't mean that God also feels it. When we handle things ourselves and don't trust in God's timing, we always make things worse right? Isn't that what we do? We help things along. We try to find a way to get the ball rolling. I, you know, I know God spoke this, but you know, it seems like God needs a little help. So, you know, lean in and get the ball rolling. Come up with some solutions. We don't understand how God could do something, but remember he's God. He works in supernatural ways, often using natural systems, but he does things above creation. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Just because it seems like God is too late doesn't mean that he's not going to come through. Don't be fooled by the circumstances. You may not see anything. The odds are against you. The experts say it's not going to work out. God controls the universe. Don't be impatient for him to act. Keep believing, keep praying, And every blessing that belongs to you will show up. You won't have to go after it. It's going to come to you. It's going to happen at the time God has planned. Have you given up hope? Have you given up hope? Did God speak something to you and you look at it and say, there is no physical, real way that this could happen. Scientifically, emotionally, whatever. There's no way this could happen. This word of God that was given to me, there's no way it could happen. You're in the perfect place for God to show up and speak into your desolation the word that he has, which is hope that his word never returns void, that his purposes and his plans for you will not be thwarted. He is God, and when he speaks it, it is so. Just check out the first narrative of scripture in the creation of all things. He spoke it. When God speaks, it comes to be. But we are limited by time, and we look at it and we know that time matters to us. It matters, we are looking at time linearly. I do not believe that God does. God looks in from eternity. Time is something God created. He's not subservient to it, he uses it. He gave us all the numerology that's in the Bible, the seven days being so significant, six days and a rest. And the whole like rhythm of the earth in its seasons. God, of course, uses time, but God is not subservient to it. God is eternal. He is the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. He was, he is, and he will be. He is outside of time. He is God. So remind yourself that when God speaks, it will come to be but it doesn't mean that it'll happen tomorrow. God doesn't do things on a normal schedule, a normal time frame. He has some unscheduled blessings for you, things that are out of season, out of the ordinary, that shouldn't happen now. The medical report says it's too late. The financial experts say things should be down. That's when God steps in and says, let me show you who I am. I'm not limited by time. I'm not affected by the economy. I'm not restricted by your age, your background, the opposition, by how long it's been. 
I control the universe. When I speak, wombs come back to life. When I speak, red seas part. When I speak, sicknesses leave. When I speak, addictions are broken. Marriages are restored. Opportunities show up. Remember, every calling, every pull into something is a journey of faith based on His timing, not yours. We cannot engineer a life of faith. Hear that, church. You cannot engineer a life of faithful obedience. You can only live into it. Trust Him when you don't see anything happening. Believe when heaven is silent. He's working behind the scenes. Every blessing that has your name on it, if you will be patient, it's not only going to find you, it's going to be much better than you think. Friends, know this. Your life is purposeful, but we have to wait on His perfect timing. We may not understand God's timing, but we can trust His character. Will we be courageously obedient even when we have to wait? And here's the thing, if you won't say yes to it, you'll never get to see the fulfillment of God. You will have to wait in courageous obedience for the word of the Lord to come to pass. He works out his plans and purposes in us. Nothing, I want want this to be the final words you hear, nothing is wasted when we trust in God's timing. He is the God who says, I will give you beauty for ashes. I will give you the oil of joy in your time of mourning and grief. Only God can do that. Only God can redeem time spent waiting, time spent hopeless. God is the God who invites us to believe in his character above and beyond our circumstances. Nothing is wasted when we wait on our faithful God's timing to reach its fulfillment. If the truth be told, and we were being totally honest, most of us don't like waiting. Particularly if we're waiting for something to change or something to get better. Waiting can be a very frustrating experience. But the worst kind of waiting of all is waiting on God. When God forces you to wait for things to get better in your life, for things to improve, to change, to reverse, and nothing is happening. And yet, over and over and over and over and over again in the Bible, we're told to wait on the Lord. The most difficult place for you to be in life is in God's waiting room. In God's waiting room. Some of you are in God's waiting room right now. What is God's waiting room? When you're in a hurry for something to happen and God isn't. That's God's waiting room. Some of you are in a hurry to graduate. Some of you are in a hurry to get married. Some of you are in a hurry to start a family. Some of you are in a hurry to launch a new business, to to, to close a big deal. Some of you are in a hurry for a big goal, a big dream, a big accomplishment. Some of you are in a hurry for all kinds of of different things, and God isn't. We as human beings hate to wait, and we especially struggle with waiting on God. Have you ever been in a hurry when God wasn't? And you're, God, I know you're going to come through, and I'm praying this really godly prayer. I know it's your will, so where are you? Why aren't you coming through? And, And you're in the waiting room of life. And we get so impatient. We want to hurry God up and we want things right now. And some of you have been waiting for God to come through and you're about to give up and you're getting discouraged. And you realize that God's standard time is not always running on my time. And it's in the waiting rooms of life we learn to trust God the most. 
in those difficult waiting rooms of life, that's where God grows us and builds our character the most. Through the pain of waiting, we learn to trust God. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. That's when he builds our character. You see, while you're working on your project, your goal, your dream, your vision, God's working on you. And God's much more interested in you than in what you're trying to accomplish. Because you're not taking your accomplishments to heaven, but you are taking your character. And sometimes God says, yeah, I intend to give you what I've promised you. I intend to answer that prayer. I intend to fulfill the vision, but you're not ready yet. I want you to grow. And when you're ready, then it's gonna happen. A lot of times we think we're waiting on God for something to happen, like a prayer to be answered. God says, you're not waiting on me. I'm waiting on you. I'm trying to prepare you. I'm testing your faith, will you trust me? But I'm also trying to grow you up because the blessing I wanna give you is so much bigger than you can handle right now. You're not ready for it. You can't handle it yet. Another thing you have to learn in life is that a delay is not a denial. There's a big difference between no and not yet. Now, immature children don't know the difference. You tell a kid, not yet, they start crying and having a hissy fit because they think it means no. They don't understand a delay is not a denial. God is saying, I I intend to do these things in your life that I've given you the vision, the dream to do, but you're just not ready yet. And at the right time, I will answer your prayer. God's often waiting on us. Now, why is this important? Because when you're in God's waiting room, you fall temptation to all kinds of negative emotions. You start worrying, you start stressing out, you get anxious, you get irritable, you get spiritual ADD, you can get envious, you can get jealous. You go, hey, he got a promotion, I didn't get the promotion. She's having a baby, I'm not having a baby. She got engaged, I didn't get engaged. He's starting a new business, it's taking off, what about mine? And and, and all these kind of negative emotions can come into your life. And then you get frustrated and then you start having a pity party. So what does God want you to do when you're in the waiting room of life? And because you're gonna go through it many, many times. God is not a vending machine where you put in the prayer and then you pull the thing and you instantly get it. There's always a delay. The delays are by design. The delays are by design to teach you to trust him and to grow up in your character. Hey, a delay is not a denial. There's a big difference between no and not yet. For those of your parents, you understand this. There's a big difference between telling your kids no and not yet. It's just not time yet. And a delay is not a denial. We see it all through scriptures. God told Noah to build a boat that would save his family from a great flood, but it didn't rain for 120 years. God told Abraham he'd be the father of a great nation, but he didn't have his first child until he was 99 years old. God told Moses that he would lead the people out of slavery from Egypt that had been in for over 450 years, but then God sends Moses out into the desert for 40 years to wait. God gives Joseph this great dream that he'll save his family and his people from famine, and he'll be a great leader. But then Joseph gets sold into slavery. He gets falsely accused and imprisoned, and he's waiting there in prison until finally God takes him from prison and positions him second in command in all of Egypt. And the promise comes true. King David, God had King David anointed as king, but he didn't really get to be king until years later. Even Jesus Christ spent his first 30 years waiting in a carpentry shop before he started his earthly ministry. See, a delay is not a denial. When God delays, sometimes we feel forgotten. Psalm 13, one says, how long, O Lord, will you forget me? Forever? You come to a point sometimes of believing that God has forgotten you. Don't worry, it's a common experience. We all go through it one time or another feeling that God isn't there, or at the very least, he's forgotten us. Perhaps our problems aren't important to him, we imagine. The psalmist encounters those very doubts in Psalm chapter 10 and verse one. Here's what he says there. Why do you stand afar off, O Lord? Why do you hide in times of trouble? What you believe is that he has given up on you. 
You may even be feeling that way right now. If so, please allow me to remind you that what you're contemplating is a simple impossibility. God never gives up on you. He never ceases to care about you, and he will not abandon his work on you, of which your trial is a part. He even says that your name is written on the palms of his hands. Your very name is tattooed on the palms of God's hands. It is engraved there. It cannot be removed, and such is God's concern for you. He cannot forget you. No matter what storm you're weathering now, you have never left God's mind or his heart. Yes, sometimes when God delays, we feel forgotten. But God never delays without a purpose. He knows you. He knows your heart. He knows everything you're asking him for. If he's not doing what you think he should do, just be patient because God loves you. Don't forget, he's got your name tattooed on his palm. He knows who you are. He hasn't forgotten, and he never will. The often God's timing disappoints us. You know, there's something, maybe something you've been praying about for a long time, and you really, you need an answer. You know, maybe you've been um, praying for something really specific, and you needed God to show up within a particular time frame. You know, it's an urgent need, and He doesn't. When God doesn't answer when you need Him to, I wonder what conclusions do you come to? Do you think to yourself, you know, did I do something wrong? Did I ask the wrong way? Do you find yourself asking, does God even hear my prayers? So often we think when God doesn't answer in our way or in our time, that it's because He doesn't love us. God loves you. He doesn't love anybody else, one grain of sand, more than He loves you. You know, in those darkest moments of life, I want you to hear Jesus looking right through your fear and saying to you, trust me, I am right here. God's timing might not have been everything you hoped for in your life, but I hope you understand that you can trust the one who keeps the time clock. We don't like to trust somebody else's timing. Why? Because we lose control. And so we'd rather than trust God because trusting God means, my goodness, I actually have to trust God. We'd rather go, listen, I like the plan and purpose you have for my life, but can we do it my way? And here's the funny thing. Now that I'm a parent, I recognize in my children that they don't like it to wait on my timing. They don't like to wait. They don't like to chill and be patient. But the thing is, if they would just trust my timing, they would recognize it's for their good. It's for them to be blessed and prosperous. And so you can live life frustrated, anxious, stressed out, angry, or you can rest and go, God, I have to trust in your timing. Just trust His timing. Why? Because it'll give you peace. It'll give you rest. And it will help you to remove all disappointment and hurt and bitterness from your heart because you'll know, actually, God's in control of my life. Why didn't God just tell you everything that's going to happen in your life right up front? Well, I think there are two or three reasons. First, it would overwhelm you, probably scare you to death. But the real reason God doesn't announce His timetable to you is He wants you to trust Him. He says, just live one day at a time. Trust me, I, I'm a good God. I'm a loving God. Everything I do in your life is for, for love, but you just gotta trust me. In Acts chapter one in the Bible, the Bible says this, Jesus said in verse seven, you don't get to know the time. Timing is the Father's business. So you're just not ever gonna know stuff in advance. You don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow in your life, much less the rest of your life. God does not tell us the details in advance. He has a timetable for your life, but he doesn't tell you the details in advance. If you could understand why God does everything God does, you'd be God. God's timing isn't good, it's perfect. Because he knows all the details, 
He knows past, present, future. He knows what we need, what we want, what's the wisest thing to do. You can never go wrong waiting upon God's timing. If I'm going to wait upon God, I've got to trust Him because my waiting is saying, I'm trusting you, God, that your timing is better than mine. You know what I do not know. Your time is always right. And so I'm going to trust you and I'm going to wait till you give me permission to go there or do this or have that or buy the other. It isn't that God's trying to deprive us of anything. He only wants what is best for us. So it takes faith. And what I mean by that is simply this. Am I willing to trust God for His timing before I make a decision? Just imagine how amazing life would be if we could trust God all the time in everything. All the time in everything. And trusting God means that we stop trying to make things happen ourselves and we wait on God. How many love waiting? We wait on God. It's a painful word even to say it. And God doesn't do it when we'd like Him to or the way we'd like Him to. But I can promise you today, if you will keep your eyes on God and trust Him to be your recompense and to be your reward and to be your vindicator, you will get double blessings for your farmer trouble. Trusting Him doesn't mean I'm going to get what I want when I want it. Trusting Him says, I believe that when the timing is right, God will provide what I'm asking Him for. You know, broken hearts do mend. Bodies do healed. Disappointment turns into new dreams. And the end of one thing can open the door for something new if we will just put our trust in God. You know what? If you're still here on the planet, God's got a plan for you. It seems to you like God's forgotten all about you. Well, He hasn't. He hears you and He sees you. Can I tell you today that you're not invisible? God knows exactly where you're at and He knows exactly what's going on in your life and He knows exactly how much you can take and how much you can't take and He may not be early, but He won't be late. God's timing is always perfect. Do I believe that He has our best interest at heart? If I believe that, I'm going to wait. But watch this. Somebody says, I don't have any time to waste. You never waste time waiting on God. Never. You'll always find out that his timing is always the right time. Sometimes you need to get knocked down before you can really figure out what your, what your fight is and how you need to fight it. Sometimes you need to feel the pain and sting of defeat to activate the real passion and purpose that God predestined inside of you. God says in Jeremiah, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Hear me well on this day. This day when you have reached the hilltop and you are deciding on, on next jobs, next steps, careers, further education, you would rather find purpose than a job or a career. Purpose crosses disciplines. Purpose is an essential element of you. It is the reason you are on the planet at this particular time in history. Your very existence is wrapped up in the things you are here to fulfill. Whatever you choose for a career path, remember the struggles along the way are only meant to shape you for your purpose. When God has something for you, it doesn't matter who stands against it. If it's meant for you, God will move someone that's holding you back away from a door and put someone there who will open it for you. I don't know what your future is, but if you're willing to take the harder way, the more complicated one, the one with more failures at first than successes. The one that has ultimately proven to have more meaning, more victory, more glory, then you will not regret it. 
press on with pride and press on with purpose and appreciate what God has brought you through.